Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show. Today, we have Miss Courtney Coble, the founder and CEO of the Academy of Goal Achievers. And I promise you, you do not want to hit the stop button on this one before you hear how Courtney instills excellence in the parents and students that she influences. Enough said. Let's get to it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the My Great Aunt Edna Show, the show about leadership, culture of excellence, doing things the right way, no shortcuts, and accountability. And today we have a great guest. I'm sure you're all going to be excited about some of the nuggets of wisdom that she will share with you. So let me introduce Miss Courtney Coble. And Courtney is a founder and chief executive officer of the Academy of Goal Achievers, which is a nonprofit organization that provides leadership and mentorship programs for high school students. Its mission is to develop youth leaders to impact communities while preparing students and families for post-secondary success. Courtney attended VA State University. She received a bachelor's in psychology and from Winston-Salem State University, she also has a master's in rehabilitation counseling. She obtained her certificate in nonprofit management from Duke University. After attending VSU and obtaining her bachelor's of science in psychology, she started her career making an impact in the social sector. For seven years, she helped homeless youth and families as a crisis counselor, and shortly afterwards became a program manager for a youth and transition program. She's had 10 plus years in management and supervisory roles, and she currently resides in Charlotte, North Carolina, and is originally from Anson County, North Carolina. And so with that, Courtney, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Oh, very welcome. You're very welcome. So if you don't mind, I'd love for you to share a little bit more about yourself personally and exactly what's going on there at the Academy of Goal Achievers. Yeah, so, you know, I like to tell people, you know, I definitely reside in Charlotte, but I'm from Anson County. That's my roots. You know, one of those towns that you don't even say the city, you say the county. So people can understand the area where I'm from. But I'm going to tell you, Anson County has some powerhouse educators. We understand the importance of education. We understand the importance of service um, leadership and giving back to our communities. You know, I'm, a, I'm the middle child, family of five, also mom and dad. Um, and just, you know, right now with the Academy of Goal Achievers and personally, I think we're all trying to figure out how to navigate life and we cannot do it alone. And that's what the Academy of Goal Achievers is all about, is taking high school students and young adults, you know, taking them by the hand and showing them, you know, really figuring out what they want to do with their lives, but providing them support and helping them navigate life. So thank you for that information. In Anson County, um, how many cities? I'm just curious because I, I don't think I've ever been to Anson County. So how many cities are in there? Anson County, you probably have six or seven cities, uh -huh. right? And Waysburg is the city. We only have one high school, one middle school in the whole county. Then multiple wow. elementary schools. So everybody funneled to the same middle school. So once you get to about sixth, seventh grade, you meet everyone in your class. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So you are absolutely evidence that great things come out of small places. So oh, yeah, that's exciting. Definitely. So I was thinking back just the other day, you know, when you and I set up the, the time to do the interview, when I first met you, um, heard about, you know, what you were doing and had the opportunity to speak to you and the passion for what you're doing. It just jumps out of your heart. Like you can hear that. It, it's genuine. It's real. And so I wanted you to share that with everyone. Um, you know, I want to start out with a couple formal questions, just like I normally do. But, you know, I also want, you know, the opportunity to get to know Courtney Coble a little bit more as we go through this. So if you don't mind, I'd love a little bit of transparency into, you know, how you feel and what made you who you are today. Listen, that's how I communicate. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so I'm excited about the interview. All right. So, so let's kick it off. So my first question here is, you know, as a leader, leader that influences today's youth, what would you say is the one thing that the students focus on in regards to wanting to be like you or emulate you? And that's, I'm gonna tell you, that's an awesome question. Um, when I first think about it, I'm like, oh, do I want the students to be exactly 
you know, Courtney, who I am as a person. But over the years, you know, I heard students say, you know, Miss Courtney, you taught me about perseverance, you know, and, you know, you're big on accountability, right? And in the day, I don't know it all, and vulnerability is key. I'm like that from top to down. I'm never in the space where I'm okay to say I know all the answers, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes when you do wrong, you have to sit in that seat. Students, I believe what they get from me is learning when they do wrong, they got to sit in the seat. Yeah. There's no, you got to sit in that seat of, man, I feel so guilty. Doesn't it feel bad to feel guilty? <laughs> now, I, mean, I mean, there's no like, you know, we're patting you on the back or, you know, we definitely is a place of empathy, but I think young adults really get from us and from my leadership is, you know, when you do right, sit in that seat. When you do wrong, sit in that seat. Um, and as they can learn that from a young age, as they navigate life, you know, they perseverance, they grit will get stronger, which is, I believe, is one of the key indicators of success. Long-term success is grit. Yeah, so what yeah. my great aunt Edna would call that is accountability. Yeah. So <laughs> teaching it early, um, they see it in you and they want to become yeah. that. So thank you for that. And then I also want to share, I don't know how much we talked about this earlier, but you also influenced the parents of the oh, students. Yeah. yeah, quite a bit. Uh, I heard that from you again when we originally met. But what have the parents of the students in the Academy of Gold Achievers taken away from your leadership style? Mm, I think the biggest thing our parents have taken away from my leadership style, per se, is um, being authentic, getting on the student's level, right? You don't have to have the own, your, don't, and not bringing your, your preconceived motions into your into the child that you're working with or raising right open communication your student have a voice and i believe with our leadership style as an organization and me myself parents have seen how it helps build rapport with their students right a lot mm -hmm. faster um i think a lot of parents we focus on a 2gm model because we have some great parents in our in our organization that really want the best for their students but you know high school kids you know, they don't want to listen to anything mom and dad is saying, right? Yeah. And yeah. parents and families need and want that that third party to come in that they trust. That's going to also, you know, they trust with their kid that they're raising and having more time with. So parents have been able to observe what we do when we have their students and being able to empower that implant and duplicate that within their household. So they have a whole parent empowerment session program that they go through too as well. That's very powerful. I love that. The two gen model is what you call it. So you're actually mm -hmm. going deeper into generations yeah. to assist the parents as well, because many of them have come from the same situations as the students. Yeah. So I love it. It's like a holistic viewpoint, you know, not just working yeah. on the students, but impacting the work when they actually get home. Right. Yeah. That's extremely would, important. Yeah. The first session we do with our parents every year is self-care. Because if our parents are not caring for themselves, our kids are not going back to, they are not going back to healthy houses, but they're not going, but they're not being raised in healthy households. So our parents, you know, they work in jobs, some of them may be multiple jobs, you know, and they have different roles. They are parent, they are sister, they are, you know, they are daughter, they're, they're working. So, you know, they have a lot going on. So it's key for our parents to learn to, so, you know what, your kid is important, but how are you doing? Like just as a wow. parent. Um, and how are you taking care of yourself? Because we know if our parents are not taking care of themselves, you know, the students are going to get very minimal from those parents. And we need our parents to be empowered just as much as our students. Because the bottom line is our students are still with us, still spend more time at home than they do with our organization. Yeah, very good insight. That's absolute leadership wisdom right there. So uh, I love that approach. So my next question is involved about, you know, your your female persona and you're an absolute strong leader, a female leader. Again, that just pops out, you know, immediately when someone speaks to you and you speak to a lot of top level leaders, you know, when you're th thinking about the fundraising efforts that you do, you know, as a strong female leader, what advice would you give to young students and even parents who might be watching this, who aspire to get to the level of leadership that you've achieved? Man, go in room with every, with confidence. Now, I'm going to tell you the how. You know, a lot of people say that because mm -hmm. what happens in your mind sometimes, you may not feel the most confident. You know, you may not feel like I belong in this space. 
but really it's all about that grit and really own what you know. Yeah. You, if you, if you are sincere about what you're doing, no space, no person can take that from you. And they cannot deny it. That one, they can feel what you're about. They know mm-hmm. you are sincere. And not only that, be able and be ready to answer questions. Be prepared. The more prepared you are, the more it alleviate a lot. And you will see those heads begin to move like, okay, well, <laughs> oh yes, let me <laughs> let me let me communicate to some of those preconceived preconceived notions, you know. Yeah. But I think the more you educate yourself in any industry you are in. Um, the more that your confidence will build and then be sincere about what you're doing. If you can't sell your why, then I would say sit down and really think about what you're doing. That was very impactful. I, I tell you the most impactful part of that for me was when you went deeper than my initial question, when you, you answered the question, but then you said, let me tell you how. Yeah. Like that is so powerful. Many leaders give advice and we just give advice and we leave it there. And people are confused, like, how am I going to accomplish this? And so, you know, that preparedness, being ready, being able to answer those questions is huge. Um, My next question involves, I'm going to go a little bit further into your persona, a black woman. So being a black woman, stepping into those rooms where you already know you might be the only um, in the room to talk about what you do and how their company can get involved. What kind of challenges have you had or struggles, obstacles as a black woman to get people to buy into the vision of the Academy of Goal Achievers? Man, I'm going to tell you, that is a loaded question. And I can have a, a, <laughs> a interview just on that question alone. Um, and I, you know, as I begin to, so there's out there, you know, a pet peeve of mine, I think we may get into this a little later, is, you know, leader versus founder. As, as there's two separate entities, right? A leader versus a founder. Like a founder can't be a leader. And if you're a leader, there's no way you're leading, you know. Um, but then you put that on top of you, a black female founder. So you're not just a black female in a, a chief executive of a big, huge organization that someone know. You're that building from the ground up. So mm-hmm. as a black, you know, and, and there's so many layers of that. But as a black female um, leader and advocating for students and families, I think some of the roadblocks that I have really, especially early on and some now, too, is just balancing that preconceived notion. You know, sometimes, you know, what are you about? You know, I, I use a term sometimes people would date the founder or date the, you know, the CEO. Oh, that's good. You know, they want to, you know, they dating me to see if um, and they're trying to build trust. But mm. I know that you're not going to date me six times. Like, OK, you don't met with myself. You don't met with a board member. You have asked to speak to a current donor. Either you're either we are aligned or we're not. Right. You know, and less, and, and if you're not, educate me on why, and then we'll work on and process that. But you're not going to date me for a year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't have the time to be dated for a year <laughs> to build trust. So, <laughs> and that's just me being, yeah. you know, because my thing is when you're advocating for students and families, just like the business world, I say something people get that messed up with corporate and nonprofit. It's all still business and we are yeah. all impacting lives. So dating me for a year is taking away resources from my students and families. So, yes, I believe in dating. I believe in building rapport and trust. That's how that start. But I think that has been the hardest process for me to know going in. That's what's happening. Mm-hmm. And it happens longer for that trust to build due to my sex and race. I have to pause on that. That was deep, passionate, <laughs> and good. And I don't think I've ever heard anyone use that metaphor of dating, but you're so yeah, right. Yeah, it's dating. They dated oh me. Oh, my goodness. That's, they're dating me. You know, going to sit <laughs> coffee meetings, you know, um, yeah. meeting me for lunch twice, then bringing someone else in on the team another yeah. time. And listen, you know, if, even though we're in a nonprofit industry, time is still valuable on this side of the fence, too. Yeah, yeah. It's still very valuable. So I think, you know, just going to that spot and, and me, too, early on learning, that was a growth thing of being more assertive and say, hey, we have met three or four times. Where are you at with this? And are there alignment? Yeah, 
And if you're not aligned with what we're doing, I know about 10 or 15 other organizations that I can, um, that could actually use your support. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna change gears here and get into something else that I know about you. This is from some what of our you know previous about. conversations, but excellence, like you're all about excellence. <sighs> you know, when you and I spoke about what you were doing a few years ago, it, again, it jumped out, out off the phone. You know, it, it was like she's about excellence, the way she handles the students, what they're teaching the students, the level of accountability that they hold the students to. So in your own words, how do you instill excellence in the students that become part of your program? And how do you continue to do that later on after they've moved out of high school? Hmm. So excellent is you know, we instill that in a way is when they first come, we have a thing that we that I was exposed to in college, just about being on time. It, it goes back to expectations. Yeah, yeah. And and teaching them that sometimes they're gonna be in environments where people have low expectations, right? So you got to show them, you know. So and most time people are gonna have low expectations of you just because who you are, what yeah. you look like, and where you're coming from. Um. But we we talk about to be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. And to be yeah. late is to be forgotten. You know, be early. You know, just being on time because people expect you to be late. Mm -hmm. They expect that. They yeah. expect you to be late. Little things like that, I think, go a long way. Um, excellence. We also have a thing we do in, from the inside out. We are a reflection of everybody around us. Whether you believe it or not, I tell students you you want to either open the door and this is them. This is accountability because we are navigating life together. You can take this in group mentoring with kids. You can take this in your work environment with your employees in corporate America. But it is so true. If one of my students and we get them an internship and they do not value it, they don't show up yeah. on time. Yeah. What are they going to do? They're going to close the door to other opportunities for students. Yes. They're going to yes. lose the partnership for the organization, yeah. you know. So getting even students know, too, that being a leader, realizing it's not all about you. So not only you have to be excellent, but that's why you have to be excellent. Yes. There's other people lives attached to your decisions. And we're counting on you because we value you because the most crucial part of this organization is the students and families we serve. I've seen I've seen students get us opportunities and I have seen students make me have a backup conversation and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Those are learning opportunities, but you know, but that is reality. Teaching students with a form of excellence, you'll be an excellent leader. You can't be a selfish one. It is yeah. not all about you and you have to realize the big the big picture. And unfortunately, but fortunately, Kids have to know that at a very early age. Yes, they do. Woo, you got me going right here. I'm serious. Uh, so one, before the camera started rolling, you guys, we were talking about my book. And oh, yeah. she was asking me about, you know, what inspired you, so on and so forth. You need to write a book. I'm telling you. <laughs> all the stuff that's coming out of your mouth right now, I'm, I'm, my mind is running. I'm just like, how am I going to get all of this into my book and where? Because I'm absolutely putting it into the book. It's it's needed. What you're saying is absolutely needed. Um, and it's passionate, just like I told everyone when this show started, that that's what was going to come from you. So we'll move into my last question. Um, and it's my staple question. I ask everyone that does this show this question. As a leader in today's environment, 2023, and thinking about what you do, the situation that you're in, what pisses you off as a leader that you wish that you could change? Mm. Ask that again. Ask me it again. All right. So Courtney Coble, 2023, founder and CEO of the Academy of Goal Achievers. As a leader in today's environment, what pisses you off as a leader that you wish that you could change? Hmm. What pisses me off as a leader um, in this world, in my industry, that I wish I can change? Um, I was telling, you know, oh, this is, you know, this is a great question because it's a, it's a few, you know, in Charlotte, and I think national, you know, black-led organizations, right? Mm -hmm. I, I touched on a little bit with um, the stigmatism with 
leadership versus founder. Yeah. And kind of founder lead, right? Then you go into trust based philanthropy. Um, where you know and that's and that's yeah. really growing and getting momentum right now. Um, but I would say those those two things um be a little piece of that. But I think at the core, what I wish I can change as as a leader that still pisses me off is the, you know, hmm, I think just an implicit bias in the industry of Black women leadership, you know, um, trust, the lack of trust, right? Um, Also, the inability to just believe in the work. You know, we, we, you know, people say, Courtney, you already, you, you always post it. You all, you know, you girl, I can just, you don't have to, I mean, one of my, you know, and, and one of my, some of my supporters is, is I post, you have to post with intention. I understand the industry we're in. You know, when you're, when you are a big organization, if I was, Maybe a big organization, you know, national, goodwill. big goodwill, goodwill yeah. big brothers, big sisters, yeah. ama- mm-hmm. doing amazing work. Yeah, they don't have to post as much because they there. That that they it is big, but being intentional and keeping what we're doing in people, just in people, um, face is important to us as an organization. Yeah. Um, that doesn't piss me off that I have to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I know it's one of the tools that I have to do to continue to build trust too, and let people and and continue to see so people can see the impact. Yeah. It's not just me saying it; you can see it. That was very, very, very good. The implicit bias, mm-hmm. and we all know it exists. You know, yeah, uh, people try to pretend like it's not there, but it it does exist. And as a nonprofit, it's hard anyway when you're starting mm-hmm. out to get to get that kind of funding that you need to be truly impactful. But mm-hmm. as a black woman, I absolutely get it. I've seen it. Um, I experienced certain levels of it myself as a black male mm-hmm. leader. Yeah. So, and and now I work for a nonprofit. I don't know if I told you that, but uh, so yeah, I definitely mm-hmm. understand. No, I truly appreciate your transparency. You did exactly what I was asking you to do at the beginning of the interview. And that's show a little bit of who you are. And I think all the viewers, everyone who's going to see this, will see who Courtney Coble is. And I'm going to put your information up at the end of the show. So all of you listeners out there, you hear the passion and the direction and the the sense of excellence that she has. Uh, reach out to her, find out more about the Academy of Goal Achievers. I'm a regular donor, have been for a few years myself. Um, get involved. Uh, you know, you can donate, you can help in other ways. Uh, the organization is in Charlotte, but I know she has plans to to broaden this out because it's a very, very important platform. And then book her as a speaker. Did you hear the passion that came out? Like the audience will will truly feel that and get excited. So, you know, reach out to, to Courtney and I'm very glad I had the opportunity to meet you. And uh, any last words, uh, Courtney, for the for the group before we leave here today? And I would say keep supporting this guy right here that we see doing amazing work, you thank know, you. And, and, and thank and thank you for the opportunity to share our message and um, and have me on your show today too as well. But yeah, go and support the Academy of Goal Achievers. We're doing awesome stuff here in Charlotte, North Carolina, but we do have some virtual opportunities. So no matter where you are, you can still volunteer and plug in and impact um, the students and families that we are serving. But like I said, in the day, keep supporting this guy. I believe great things are on the rise and you already doing great things. So thank you, Courtney. I appreciate work. that. All right, guys. So with that, I say God bless and may your week be excellent. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, Courtney. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to today's show. And just like I told you, it was going to be phenomenal. I want to thank Ms. Courtney Coble, the founder and CEO of the Academy of Goal Achievers, and sharing her passion and leadership excellence. The information is on the screen now for you to reach out to Courtney, find more about what she's doing to influence the youth in the next generation, and also book her for speaking engagements. As you can see, she's extremely passionate. And I also want to remind everyone about my book coming out, My Great Aunt Edna, The Golden Girl of Leadership. It will be available in Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and wherever books are sold. So make sure to pick up your copy. 
And with that, I say, may your week be excellent and God bless.